crafting lovelies. I am the Rocky Mountain Crafter and I'm so very glad that you are joining me today. These are Lindy's Stamp Gang Magical Powders. This suite is called Northern Lights. So I'm going to open up this container and take a fan brush and start laying down these powders onto the paper with a fan brush. So this first color is Hockey Puck Black. And then, listen to this name, Canadian Bacon Blush. How fun. Then I go into the Maple Syrup Bronze. The Emerald A, such a beautiful green color. And finally, Polite People Purple. Now these all have a shimmer to them, a little bit of a shimmer. Especially the maple syrup bronze really gives that gold color. So you can see here, once I activated it with water, look at those beautiful colors. And this is what it, the panel looks like when it's dry. Then I take some Juniper Mist by Catherine Pooler and a blending brush. And I'm just going to focus on the spots that don't have the gold. And I really like the green. And I really like the pink. So I'm going to fill in gaps in between with this juniper mist to give this panel a night sky feel. And there is no rhyme or reason to my blending technique here. I am trying to focus on the edges a little bit, get them a little bit dark, but also leave the portions in the middle like the gold and the pink and the green that I really love. Then with a white pigment reinker, this is Unicorn by Hero Arts. I am just putting some drops of that onto an acrylic block and I am just diluting it a little bit with a couple of squirts of water, taking that same fan brush, which still had some of those magicals on it. So you can see my white has now turned kind of a pinky color, but that's perfectly fine because it really looks great with that background. So there I have some nice stars on there now. Now I'm taking some of the Catherine Pooler sets that I think might go. This one was a Club Circe, which is her Stamp of the Month Club. That set is called Up Above. This next set is called What's Up. And look at these cutie animals and the matching dye. All of these sets have matching dyes that I'm showing you today. Here we have Stargazing. Beautiful, beautiful. And this next one, I just love it. It is Light Reading. Look at those books made out of stars and a heart of stars. So any one of these stamp sets would work. And there's even this gorgeous cover plate called Starry Night, and it has double duty. You could even make shaker bits with it. And the Oslo Sequin Mix, also by Catherine Pooler Designs. And look at the beautiful blues in here. And there's some like translucent light greenish teal colors and some opaque navy and some stars. It just goes so perfect for shaker cards. From that stamp set, What's Up, I am taking the little stars that come in the set and I'm going to use some of that Unicorn White Pigment Ink again by Hero Arts and I'm going to ink up those stars after putting them onto an acrylic block and I'm just doing very minimal amount of stars on this card in white just as a background, that's it. And they won't be hardly noticeable at all once I have shaker bits on top of them. Then I am, oh, there's a spider. See the spider? Here, I get a close up on him. I like spiders. I just let him roam around my craft room. I'm taking my two-way tape gun and putting tape all across the back of that because this is just a piece of paper, but I want it to have more stability. And so I'm backing it onto a piece of cardstock. And that does give it more stability and flattens it out. The reason I use paper is because it is a super smooth paper and it has a, a coating on it and it makes all that sparkle stay on top. I find the results of using paper versus cardstock is much better. Now I'm taking the star element from this set, the shooting star. And I grab a selection of Catherine Pooler inks. The colors that I use are Shea Butter sugared lavender, rose petals, and polished. And I'm also grabbing a water pen brush and making sure there's ink on the lids. You do want to do this on a piece of scrap paper so you have 
a piece of scrap paper there to get the ink off afterwards in between each color. And so with the ink on the lids, I'm just picking up colors and making a gradient kind of shooting star is what it's going to be. And so it's going to have yellow, but then also pink and purple and orange in the tail. So I'm stamping that star down with memento ink and then die cutting it. Look at that. That's so pretty. Now I'm die cutting it with my Sizzix mini desktop. And I just go through twice just for good measure, make sure it's absolutely cut through. And there it is. Now the gradient doesn't show up very well here on camera, but I assure you it's gradient. Then I'm just looking for placement on the card and a sentiment. And I'm pulling out that light reading stamp set and pulling out the sentiment. Shine like the stars. And now I want to do some heat embossing. So I've pulled my heat embossing swatches and I'm going to choose the best color. Now I have a tutorial on how I did the heat embossing powder swatches and I will link that at the end of this video if that's something you're interested in doing. I find this swatch is very helpful. I actually couldn't decide. There were a few colors here, the gold I liked, the black I liked, there was this silvery blue color I liked, but I did end up going with the wow gold. And now I am going to heat emboss. So grabbing my precision press again and putting the sentiment in there to get the perfect placement of it and setting that shooting star in there also. And then I'm going to ink this up. So I think that inking and heat embossing is pretty straightforward with Versamark. Um, but I'm going to tell you why I have that shooting star in there. When I do a shaker card, I like to have an element inside the shaker underneath the plastic of the shaker because I pop that element up and then when I put the shaker plastic over top it makes the plastic be off the back panel so that the shaker elements inside can move better. So that is my plan for this star. So I'm putting some two-way tape onto the back of the star because I'm using an embossing pen by American Crafts and I'm going around all the black. I want this star everywhere that there's black to be gold. And then I take my two-way tweezers. Now that the star has two-way glue on it, I'm just gluing it to the two-way tweezers so I can hold it for embossing. So it's not gonna get hot on my hands. I have some, something to hold it with. And then again, I use my heat tool to heat up that gold embossing powder around the edge. Now, the first time I did this, it wasn't perfect. And so I went over those parts again. You can see some black peeking through there. I just went over them again with that embossing pen and again, dipped it into the embossing powder and again, set it with the heat tool. And now I have a gold outlined star. So it matches with the rest of the card. Now I'm taking those cute animals and I'm going to stamp them. But before doing that, I need to make them a little black hill. And so I'm just taking some memento black and a blending brush and blending onto the bottom of that card in the black ink so that it looks like they will be sitting on a hill. And I do this until I'm satisfied and then I put the animals into my precision press stamping platform and ink those up in the same memento black. Now I did it a few times. I find that it was quite uh, not saturated the black on this card, but that's okay. It's going to be mostly covered by shaker elements. Now I have this Zig brush pen in ultra fine white. And I'm just going under the bottoms of the animals to make a shadow and blending it out with a paintbrush. And there, that gave them kind of depth on that hill. And so now I'm just putting into place that star element that will be popped up on the inside of a shaker panel to give the sequins inside movement. And so I've just put on my foam tape onto the back of that and now it's time to make the shaker window. So this is an edge to edge shaker card. I've just used some packaging here. This packaging is from magnetic sheets that I have that are eight by 10. They each come in individual packaging and I save it for this reason. So you cut it to size. I like to leave about half an inch 
and then cut off all four corners, creating flaps. So now that that's done, I'm taking my two-way glue and putting that onto the back of the panel. And then I will put the plastic down and flip it over so the back is facing me. And then those flaps can be folded over, but only fold over three. And I also like to put my scissors in here or something to create a little bit of a pocket. Again, I don't want this panel too tight because then my shaker elements won't move. So by putting the scissors in there, that helps to give the elements more room to move. And then we just fold over that last flap and that is the shaker panel done. Now we need to put that onto a card base and I use pre-made card bases. They just make life easy. And I like using liquid glue for this so I have room to play afterwards if it's not completely centered on the card base. And then I'm just going to flip that over and set that right on top of that card base, push it down, make sure that you're putting quite a bit of pressure on there because it does have a little bow to it, a little warp. So if you put some pressure onto it, it will straighten out. And there is the beautiful shaker card. So fun. My daughter is turning nine very soon and I plan to give this to her for her birthday card. She will love it. You guys, I thank you so much for watching today. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm very, very glad that you're here. I will link all of the products used in today's video below. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and on my blog at therockymountaincrafter.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and have a lovely week. Bye-bye.